It's Ricochet and Alistair Black versus Eichner and Bartell. It's the Forgotten Sons versus Lorcan and Birch. It's the Street Profits versus Mustache Mountain and DIY versus the Undisputed Era. It's the Catalina Wine Mixer. No, dude, it's the Dusty Roads Classic. Oh. Support, no DQ. Welcome everybody to What's NXT. I'm your host, the Rated R Reviewer, Stephen Osborne, joined as always by the General Jerry Slaughter. Good evening, wrestling fans. And tonight we have the first round of the Dusty Roads Classic. That is the tag team tournament. Yes. To declare a number one contender to the War Raiders Tag Team Championships. It's a double episode, more or less. We get an hour and 15 minutes of just great, great content in general. Well, we got my favorite, four matches. Mm -hmm. But these were all first round uh, matches for the Dusty Roads Classic and... Wow. Yeah, they, they, they did not disappoint. I mean, it's all we got besides some uh, promos and vignettes and recaps and videos from the performance Even some center. of the news we got for future matches was astounding. This oh, was yeah. a great episode all around. We knocked out four. That's over half of the matches of the tournament in one go. So now you can just stick them in the next few episodes here and there. So I thoroughly enjoyed this show. This was great. Um... I actually took fucking no notes for any of these matches other than the finish. I just wanted to enjoy them, and enjoy them I did. Yes. I, I was like, I was in the moment too, but at the same time there's just like, there's moments in the matches where I just had to write something down real quick, but even then I had to just make sure, you know, to pay attention to the screen, but at the same time try to write at the same time. It's very, very difficult. I'm just hoping <laughs> once we start talking about them, my memory uh, helps me describe some of the awesome spots because every one of these matches had a few awesome spots in it oh yeah um but let's get started with the very first match we've got right out of the box right out of the box ricochet and alistair black versus fabian eichner and marcel bartel and this match set the bar for the rest of the night it, and it was a very difficult bar to go uh, go up against because right after that we got um lorkin and birch versus forgotten son so i'm like how how are you gonna how are you gonna follow that really? Because you have two of the most elite stars in NXT right now versus a, a team we're just really high on and we've been on for like on since they formed in NXT UK and Eichner and Bartel. They they keep on getting better with each match. The so, European Union. The European Union. So, but it's it's one of those matches where. It, it could have gone either way. We were really hoping for um, Eichner and Bartel to pull off the upset, or that's what they would have considered to be an upset. Yeah. They called it, uh, it, they said that if they got the pinfall, it would be an upset. And I'm like, why would that be an upset? They've been a tag team way longer. Yeah. Um, but you called it. I mean, Ricochet and, and Black are more established. They're in, in two of the top four, basically, stars in NXT to the point where those are the four that are getting called up. Yeah. Well,. All but one. And we'll get into that later. Yeah. Um, bad news. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the main event. Um, right now, this match... Okay, so you take Aleister Black, who's awesome, from the entrance to the ring and all the way back. Yeah. Like, he's just awesome. Ricochet is on another fucking level. Yeah. This man... And I don't just say that because he's from Kentucky, too. This man is... Bazooka! On, this is... He's fucking nuts. But then you throw in Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel, who are both individually amazing superstars, especially Eichner. Eichner, for his size, he just, he does that, okay, so he's on the apron, and he springs up to do a, uh, a, a springboard in, but he springboards from that corner to the other to do a moonsault, all top rope, yeah. all amazing looking, super high moonsault. Very crisp. Lands it. Gets a near fall, though. I mean, yeah. I didn't think he was going to get the pinfall from that, but um, just what an awesome match. I, I know we I know we usually call Jordan Devlin's greatest hits on our tea parties, but we got to see Eichner and Bartel's greatest hits like pulled in this one, too. The spine buster with the soccer kick from Bartel. They're getting Bartel. so much more fluid with these moves as yes. well. And, my God, the lawn dart brain buster. <sighs> like, the, Eichner, no, Bartel just throwing... 
ricochet off the top rope into a waiting Eichner. And who catches him? Catches him. Falls back a little bit, but then holds him. Just dead weight holds him, and then fucking drops him for uh, basically a brain buster bite. Yeah. Just awesome. But I'll do you one better because there's that spot where Bartell runs the ropes, comes back, and does that basement uh, drop kick. Yes. While formerly Eichner would hold them, like d kind of doubled over over the middle rope, sort of towards the corner. You know, caught up in the in the ropes. Eichner would hold him. Well, now Eichner runs and slides out of the ring, comes back around, uh, drive by style, yep. and does a drop kick to their head from the outside. So you got uh, double basement drop kicks. It was beautiful, beautifully executed. For a second, I was like, "What the fuck is uh, what the fuck is Eichner doing?" And then he comes back around. I'm like, "Oh." That's how you make that move look incredible. I was Not about just the camera angle. I was about to say, because with, with that now, even if Bartel didn't nail the drop kick all the way, you still have the force of Eichner's drop kick come from the side that will completely distract you from it. But the baby faces win. Alas. Um, well, I mean, it's not alas. I mean, I like Black and Ricochet, respectfully, together and separately. But... I was really hoping for uh, Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel to get a, a push off of them going to the main roster. But the, about, I was about to say that's the that's the problem I'm coming, already having with this tournament is the fact that like we know Alistair Black, Ricochet, Gargano, and uh, Ciampa are not going to be winning this tournament. Is because they're going to be getting called called up right to the WWE main roster. Well, they're kind of blurring the lines there, and they're going to get called up soon, but we don't know how soon. So there's a little bit of room for maybes, but for the most part, you're right. Yeah, it it, it kind of takes you takes even put makes it even less believable than what we're used to, which. It's kind of sloppy on their part, but at the same time, Triple H kind of put everybody in a spot by bringing those guys up like that. Support! No DQ! So Ricochet was all over the place like a human pinball machine. And uh, we got to see the running shooting star press, uh, the Suicida. I mean, he was, he, he was showing why he's gotten called to the main roster after such a short period of time. And, and he made the call that he did, th delivered a better European uppercut than the rest of the Europeans in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it's a little disrespectful that he gets that running European to uh, Bartel. And Jerry's like, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> That's the point, I guess. So in the end, uh, we we've got Eichner and we've got Black in the ring, and it's Eichner such goes a super for. Finish. Uh, I know he goes for that spinning power bomb, but uh, Black gets out of it, and then he just Eichner goes for these strikes, and they look like they're effective, but suddenly Black turns around, Black Mass. Yes, out Eichner's of nowhere. Out. One, two, three, the baby faces win, and good on them. Sure, why not? Because it was such a barn burner of a match. It was yeah. such a great match from top to bottom. So up next we've got a video recap from last week's uh, Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic match that ended in a double count out. Which we were okay with. Which leads us into a video of Keith Lee training at the Performance Center with uh, some guys. And we've seen this already. We saw this on NXT UK last week. Um, with Travis Banks, I believe, yeah, in their performance center, and then who comes out? Fucking Jordan Devlin. We knew that was coming. So in this case, I knew fucking we were going to see Dominic Dijakovic come out. Sure but, enough, but there was no altercation. There was just a bunch of shouting back and forth. Yeah, he's like, "Hey, we got a ring here. We can finish this right now." And it's like, "Yeah, you could, but you're blurring the lines between uh, what the reality in the performance center is." Where they're showing people how to take moves right now in yeah. front of us, and you coming out saying I want to fight. <laughs> oh, this is whereas it, it was it was sloppy, but the payoff is great because we get the rematch between these two in two weeks. Yes, that is the payoff, and I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm looking forward too. to some other kind of screwy finish where neither one gets it, and this leads to a match at NXT Takeover New York. Or I was about to say you could always have, like two out three falls is what I'm hoping for. That or some stipulation where you can't get a double count out and you can't get a double whatever. Yeah. Maybe it's a double disqualification. That's what we get uh, in two weeks. Yeah. And they're like, well, fuck. We'll just make it no DQ, no count out. 
Whatever. Hashtag no DQ. Hashtag no DQ. <laughs> So, uh, up next, we've got our second match in the first round of the Dusty Rhodes Classic. We've got the Forgotten Sons, that's Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler, and we've got Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. And again, no notes up until the end. This match started off kind of slow -ish. Yeah, It kind of needed to, because people were still catching their breath from, the, from that last match. Yeah, totally. So... Lorcan and Birch, they actually like impressed the crap out of me on the last leg of the um, NXT UK sessions down in Phoenix that they just did. The, the round, the their loss to Gibson and Drake was it was just a great match. Great match. They looked awesome. Yeah, uh, I highly recommend going back and watching that. That is the main event from the third week of the uh, Arizona tour yeah. where they were over there for the Royal Rumble uh, access or whatever, and yeah. That was an awesome match, and it gave me new depth to uh, how I feel about Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch. I don't necessarily the, like them, the, they're a very but I respect the, the, the shit out of them a lot more. I was about to say, they're a very Smash Mouth team. There are a couple of hooligans, and it's great. I guess. But, and then you have the Forgotten Sons, who... You hooligans. Know, they, they, they just kind of... Hooligans. <laughs> they, just, they just are there to fight, and Riker out there just standing and doing nothing. Again, yeah, um, I was a little thrown by. The, I thought Riker might not come to the ring with them, but it was even announced, accompanied by Jackson Riker, and uh, I'm like, okay, so maybe he gets involved in this match. Nope, he's coming off as very Charles Manson like, almost like the Manson family kind of thing. Like he just stands out there, just stares all crazy while they do all all the work. I mean, us. we've seen him get involved. He got involved when they beat the street. Street Profits. Yeah, but at the same time, I guess he, they didn't see, he didn't see the um, Lorcan and Birch as nearly as big of a threat, which is kind of weird. Or just, there was no point where he really needed to. Well, there was a couple of points. Oh, where he yeah. Could've. I mean, this match, you call, uh, the, the first spot I remember, because you were calling for it, was waiting for that headbutt, that sick headbutt Danny that Danny Birch, Birch just does. Has a great headbutt. Okay, so what happened was, uh, I believe it was... Cutler, I think it was. Had yeah, a, they're almost interchangeable. They look just the same, and now they're tights, for, too. If it weren't for the tights, it, like we wouldn't know. Their names Mar are on their legs, Ma but it's Mar the same lettering. Oh. Mauro Ranallo even said, one of the Forgotten Sons. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> Either or. The only one you can tell the difference in is Jackson Riker, and I guess that's the point. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, he's got him in a... Uh, Boston Crab. Yeah, I, I thought it was a butterfly. No, but Butterfly was um, earlier, I believe. I think it, at that point he's in a Boston Crab because, like, Birch just ran up and just headbutted Yeah, him. just headbutted and knocked him out. <laughs> it, it, like, he was out cold in the ring, not moving for, like, 10, 15 seconds at yep. least. It was it was sick looking. But, uh, yeah, there, there was that Butterfly that turned into... Okay, so it was like a Butterfly um, suplex that yeah. rolled over, rolled through. Then another one rolled through, then came back up, and then I guess uh, dropped him on into a, a, a lung blower, a double knee, that came off from that. It was almost a code breaker. Came yeah. off from that, but kicked him into because uh, dude still got him by the legs. Yep. Kicks him into a fucking double leg suplex, and I'm like, wow. Okay, uh, Forgotten Sons. Cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. Um, there was a few spots like this, and the match actually picked up towards the end to where it was very entertaining. Not quite the first match of the night. Not quite the main event, but we'll get there. We got some really cool tag maneuvers out of Forgotten Sons, which is weird because usually I forget everything that they ever do. So we got the Missile Drop Kick Flatliner. With, like yeah, combination that was sweet which, that was beautiful I, I i look forward to them get making it look more fluid yeah. but uh the idea was solid and then we also have basically missile drop kick to the gut with a, a reverse ddt that gets the pinfall yeah and this was a good match to come off of that extremely exciting opener um and we got the heels moving forward to face well maybe that gives it away but we'll get there uh up next, we've got Velveteen Dream in the middle of the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Just decides to come out. And he doesn't go to the because, ring. Because he can do that. 
Please he goes, stop a teen dream. Yeah. He goes to the announcer's table, stands on it, and that's where he cuts his promo. Pretty much Jared just announced that the champ is here. And uh, Jerry thought that uh, we were going to see Adam Cole come out and challenge him for the championship. Nope. Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle out. Bro. And I'm going to say this right now. This promo actually interested me. Like, usually Matt Riddle, I'm I, I'm ready to tune out. I'm ready to start drawing bunnies on my notes. Whatever the fuck ever. <laughs> I, I'm not really listening to anything that Matt Riddle says. But this time he actually put down tone the whole, you know, sur- re- relax, surfer, bro, like, image for a little bit there. And he was being... Got a little di- more serious. He was being more serious, which he said he was going to be doing. He's moving past Cassius Ono and going into something different. And going into something different, he really, really is. He, like... He just jumped the shark on this one. <laughs> yeah, he jumped whoever else has been there before him in line for the North American Championship because he basically says, you know, he comes out and he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm here to congratulate you on your title victory. And uh, he wants to see that title a little bit closer. So Velveteen Dream holds it about foot out. <laughs> as close as you're going to get, but uh, don't forget the spotlight Snap, Velveteen Dream snaps his fingers and the spot, all of the lights cut out and spotlight on him. Blocks of Velveteen Dream. Yeah. Yeah. Dream over. And that was, it was brilliant looking. Uh, if they have a clip of just that promo, I, I recommend watching Oh, that. yes. I mean, honestly, I recommend watching the whole episode because well, all four of these first round matches were incredible. I think this is going to set up for Matt Riddle versus um, Velveteen Dream at TakeOver. I think in between there, though, I think we're going to get Matt Riddle versus Adam Cole, who's going to take exception to Velveteen Dream, like, you know, challenging him for what he feels is still his title. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I hate to see Adam Cole lose to Matt Riddle, but... It'd okay. be a hell of a match. It would. It would. And, I mean, he is a heel. He's supposed to lose, so... Yeah. The whole team's heels. They're supposed to lose. But we'll get there. <laughs> so... <laughs> Up next, we have the only female uh, spot on the show. We've got a video package uh, promo for Io Shirai where there's some new interviews and things like that. It's got Kyrie Sane in there. And basically, they're talking about Bianca Belair and how essentially she had the win in that six-woman tag match against Baszler. And then Io Shirai tags herself in, does her moonsault, and gets the pinfall, yeah. which makes her look like a more credible contender for the championship. And uh, Io Shirai basically says, you've never beaten uh, Baszler, but I did. Off an assist from her. Yeah, but at the same time, Bianca Belair had her one-on-one shot, and she lost. But she did good in the process. She lost so hard, she went all delusional, and now she thinks she's still undefeated. No, she's not undefeated. She's un da be <laughs> You forgot the click. So, next week... We are getting Io Shirai versus Bianca Belair for the number one contendership for Shayna Baszler's championship. I presume we'll see that match happen at NXT TakeOver New York. Mm-hmm. So we're finally getting, like, the card for TakeOver is actually taking shape pretty well now. Pretty yeah, sure. yeah, probably still going to be just five matches, but awesome. Mm-hmm. So up next, we've got the third match in the first round. We've got the Street Profits versus Mustache Mountain. I was psyched for this match from the get-go. I told I, I wanted Street Profits to win, man, uh, I they so are the NXT too. team, not the NXT UK, because Mustache Mountain really is NXT UK now. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Right, at, right out of the box, but the Street Profits coming down to the ring. Montez Ford's got a ski mask on because he says he's there to steal the show. Steal the show. <laughs> And he really didn't. No, he didn't. Like, there, it's, in, re- it's really hard to steal the show in a match for Tyler Bates in it. True, but, I mean, still, in every match that I've seen him in in the last probably three or four months. Yeah. Or possibly even six, like, he has stolen the show. Yeah. He's just been amazing. And in this match, really, other than the frog splash, which he got incredible air for... But other and, than this, and, and, and the dive outside towards the end as well. Oh, well, yeah, but we saw, like, at least one suicide dive in every match tonight. Yeah. Well, that, that wasn't even a suicide dive. It was that running thing where he, like, just vaulted over the top. Oh, right? yeah. So, this wasn't match of the night. No. 
But I don't know. I don't know if I would put this one better than the previous match with the Forgotten Sons. I think I would. I, I'd put I put it above that, but not above um, Eichner Bartel versus the... Um, Somehow, just because of Tyler Bate. I think Tyler Bate, for me, is getting the John Cena Roman Reigns heel heat right yeah. now. Or baby face heel heat. Yeah. Because he just continuously impresses me. But I still don't want to like him because he's such a obnoxious ass baby face. <laughs> yes. He, he like he high fives the crowd. He like he plays them, and it's and it's it's nerving, unnerving is what it is. He is the for me. He's the antithesis of Jordan Devlin. Jordan Devlin is such a good heel that I, even though I want to punch him in the face, I still want to watch him wrestle because he's really good. Yeah. Um, same thing with uh, Tyler Bate. He's such a terrible baby face that I want to punch him in the face. <laughs> But at the same time, I definitely want to watch him wrestle because he does some incredible things. Um, you, you, I have no notes it, other than the end. You heard it here, folks. Stefan wants to punch babies. <laughs> I want to punch baby faces. That's why they call them heels, because they punch baby faces. The biggest thing for me in this match was um, the Spine Buster from Dawkins and then the Sprock Slash from Montez Ford that Tyler Bate kicks out of. We haven't seen anybody kick out of that frog splash. Nope. And so, the the look the look of shock on Montez Ford's face probably was the same look on mine. Granted, I already knew going into it that Mustache Mountain was gonna beat the forgot uh, beat um Street Profits, and I hated it because I because like you said, they're the homegrown team. They're the ones that that need to be in this shit like yeah. this tournament, and they need to be getting pushed, and they're still not. It's it's like Kofi all over again. <laughs> It's crazy. And, I mean, I thought, by the time we got here, I thought you were right because we needed a babyface team to win and the Street Profits are definitely going heel right now to face their Forgotten Sons, but we've also turns we've, out that gets broken. That that uh, that whole idea is mush. We've, we've also established that um, Street Profits aren't really much for heels as much as you're get, trying to just become more serious. No, kind of, kind of I like, think they're definitely going heel. Oh, you are? Yeah, I think they definitely are going heel. Well, I was about to say that... Which is fine. I was about to say, they're, they're, they've got an equal amount of like heel teams and babyface teams, I think, at this point in NXT. So, I think this loss is what pushes them completely into heel. Oh, yeah. The, the, the look on their faces, like looking back into a ring at Mustache Mountain, was just... Ugh. This match was good, man. Tyler Bate was awesome. I highly might recommend watching this match. Like I said, no notes other than the end. Um, we got Tyler, or Seven lifts uh, Dawkins up in the torture rack. And uh, Bate goes up top, comes down with, I think it was a knee. Yeah, it looked like a knee. A knee, or maybe a double stomp across Dawkins' face. <laughs> yes. As uh, Trent Seven comes down with the ugliest fucking slam and it was an ugly move, but it got the pinfall just for, uh, just for Trent Seven to roll his fucking sweaty, flabby body <laughs> over Dawkins' face. Angelo must have been just or, disgusted. Or, so, just, what, what, what did just you, roll right over his face? Uh, if you were to if you were to name that move that they did, what do you think you would call it? Because I came up with um, shaving a haircut. <laughs> well, they. Uh, Sure, I mean, but shave implies no mustache. Yeah. Well, the, the Angelo Dawkins really doesn't have a mustache. <laughs> the mustache avalanche? I don't know. Oh, the avalanche? Why as well? Because they're mustache mountain. That there, there's sense. already avalanche to... Well, anyway. Yeah. So, up next, I don't think we get any more promos or... Vid nope. packages or anything bullshit. It, it, it cuts right right back into right into the main event, mm -hmm. and the main event is the undisputed era. That's Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly versus DIY. Now, Johnny Gargano and then Tommaso Ciampa come out separately to their own individual singles music, but then uh, Ciampa starts kind of pointing at Johnny Gargano and saying some shit. I can't tell what he's saying. Well, he's like, I almost like wait for it. At first, I thought he was making some puppet master commands, like uh, just do what I told you to do, and uh, you know follow my lead in the match. And wait, we're, we're gonna no, no. Up. He was like, listen, basically, listen, wait, wait, wait. You'll thank me for this later. And the DIY music comes on, and, and the, the crowd goes apeshit. They're into it. They're clapping along. 
I think some of them are singing along. Like, I, I don't know if there's lyrics. Humming along, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that pumps up the crowd. That pumps up Johnny Gargano, actually. But the whole time, the commentary is like, it's this is I've, so weird. It's so, so weird to see. And it's the most I've seen Ciampa smile that doesn't look completely sadistic in forever. <laughs> So yeah, the story of this match for me was the commentators continuously saying how weird it is to see Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa having a tag match together, when two weeks ago we saw them on both Raw and SmackDown yeah. as a tag team working just fine, enough to win the matches. And in this case, it is no different. We thought Undisputed Era was going to go home with the win here somehow, even though they made Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa look great. And, and, and face off against Aleister Black yeah, the baby and Ricochet. Faces. Yeah, Makes sense, right? Nope. Nope. Gargano and Ciampa get the victory with the meat in the middle. They, they, they get the great. W, yes. Yeah, because they, they, they hit both of their uh, finishers, their singles finishers, in a row. So you had Ciampa catch, I believe it was Kyle O'Reilly coming through the ropes, Catches him and immediately drops him with uh, draping DDT. Yeah. He rolls over and then gets up. And as he's getting up, uh, Champa makes the tag and Johnny Gargano leaps in for the uh, the what is it the slingshot shot DDT. Mm -hmm. Makes the cover. O'Reilly kicks out. Yeah, th th that's that, that that stunned me a little bit. That was great. But as he stumbles to his knees, one has to think that getting to your knees in the middle of the ring with this team is a bad idea. And sure enough. Super kick to the front, knee to the back of the head, meet in the middle, one, two, three, Ciampa and Gargano advance. And this match was awesome. Again, no notes. Um, I've got a couple. Yeah, drop some, drop some Mo on us. Most, mostly for a fact that it must have been Nigel McGuinness's fucking birthday. Okay, because we have uh, Ciampa pull off the Tower of London in the corner. And then later, we, during an like a exchange of clotheslines between O'Reilly and Gargano, O'Reilly pulls off the Jawbreaker Lariat. and like well, Not he, just the Jawbreaker Lariat. He, uh, they're trading blows like... Uh, like semi selling, then no selling, and then and then trading with something of their own. And uh, O'Reilly hits basically the uh, lunatic lariat, the, yeah. uh, Dean Ambrose, you know, where he f falls through the middle and the top rope and catches himself with his legs, springs back up, lariat. Yeah, th that, that's, that's what it was before, a jawbreaker lariat. Well, then he does it to the bottom rope. Yeah. That oh, was it, great. He, he, he just catches such trajectory on it, it's great. And even before that, we also had the uh, rolling butterfly suplexes out of O'Reilly. Th those were just beautiful. So. Oh, so that was this match, not the one that. I, uh, my bad. Uh, yeah, it, it's okay though. It, it sounded great. It, it sounded great, so I wanted to let it go. <laughs> that's why I take notes, people. Mm -hmm. That's why I take notes because I will fuck that shit up. But the the move for for the match for me could have easily turned into a like um, superplex off the top rope from Bobby Fish. Fuck no. He went Mishinoku Driver on it. <laughs> Almost like Falcon yeah. Arrow. Falcon was, Arrow. Yeah, yeah, basically. It was, it was off the top rope. That was crazy. Off the top rope Falcon Arrow. No, I knew it wasn't going to get like you know the pinfall, but at the same time, wow. Red Dragon was just in full effect that night, dude. Seriously. Still couldn't stand up to DIY, though. Nope. The, the amazing baby faces. The, 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 just pretty much the pops and everything they were getting and the... Like just the momentum going into this match, I, we should have known better, but we didn't. So that brings us to the end of the main event. Yep. And around here on what's NXT, we rate the main event based off the general's five star rating system. Jerry, oh man, I wish we'd just rate the show because this was an amazing show. This main uh, event I, though was I, I was, was it better than the opening match? Okay, well, this is gonna be hard for me. Let me, let me. You just rate it, and then. Okay, I'm actually gonna go with four and a quarter, because yes, it was not as good as the opening bout. The opening bout just kept my attention all the way through, whereas we had some headlocks and everything, and like a lot, a little more wear down submission holds with this one. So the pace was a little bit slower, whereas like the first first match, it was just nonstop go. So. But also, you gotta take. I'm also using your system and adding, adding a quarter off an amazing show all all together, and then the fact that we had Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano win, even though we know they're going to be getting called up, and we're the War Raiders are probably not going to be losing the titles anytime soon. 
so that and now we have a whole bunch of other things to discuss but like with champa because of his uh neck injury yeah so let's get into the neck injury after i rate the show yes um, what's your final rating is it four oh, and a four, half four and a quarter uh four oh yeah four and a half four and a half so i actually think the main event was better because it came with a storyline and that's Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano in their yeah. first match together in NXT as DIY. Technically their first match together considering when it was taped. Um, it was a great match. Just great. Like the back and forth, the near falls were just awesome. I highly recommend watching this. The, the, just the whole show. Coming off the back of a great show, extra quarter star. I gotta give this... Four and three quarters. Yeah. Oh, wow. The short Just, five star. I mean, this was really great. I mean, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa just tore down the house against... Uh, and it wasn't like they just rolled over Undisputed Era. No. They held their own for at least half this match, if not more. So, uh, conspicuous by his absence, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. Both of them not there, so... But uh, for the f opening match, you know, there was no storyline. The storyline would have come if uh, Ricochet and Aleister Black had actually got to meet Undisputed Era in the uh, tournament. Yeah. But since they don't, there's no storyline there. And for this, it's Gar or DIY getting back together. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm going four and three quarters. Great show. Great match. Um so who do we who are we saying for like the uh, finals for for this tournament now? DIY and Mustache Mountain. The, the, that's what it's starting to look like because we have Mustache Mountain versus Forgotten Sons, and we got DIY. Versus... There's only one heel team left that can go against. Uh, so maybe Forgotten Sons. I'm gonna say DIY versus Forgotten Sons. And then Forgotten Sons somehow win the tournament, even though it seems like the least likely team. Because who goes they against do, the War they Raiders? Do, they do need kind of need a push at this point. Do you want to see Mustache Mountain versus the War Raiders? Not really. Or do you want to see uh, the Forgotten Sons e e with even, Jackson e Riker? Even I know Hanson would pull off some crazy shit against against Tyler Bate. I'd rather see DIY versus the War Raiders, but if they're going to win the tournament, they, you're going to want them to beat a... Uh, heel team not the must well i but, don't know but in the long run it's not gonna matter because we had breaking news earlier that champa has been injured and he has to go under neck surgery yes same kind of surgery that uh edge had ended his career yep um so this is possibly career threatening worst time in the world oh yes nxt champion and getting called up wow <laughs> That that's just, that's just the effect that Trump has had in his career because he got let go from WWE quite some time ago. Then that's when he went on to the independent scene, started gaining muscle, started looking a lot more psychotic, and um, became like the Sicilian psychopath that we know now. So, do you think this is going to uh, keep Johnny Gargano in NXT and uh, keep him out of the hands of a destructive Vince McMahon? I'm, I, that's the only saving grace for this whole thing is the fact that Gargano and Ciampa's team will dissolve and chance are we're going to get to keep Gargano possibly as NXT champion if the title, the title gets vacated. Yeah, I kind of, if, if his neck's that bad, I don't see him having a match to drop the title. He's just going to have to vacate it. And how, how fitting would it be for him to, like, John Gargano to have lost his belt and not even wrestler Gargano and uh, uh, Ciampa and take his. So. Wow. Four and a half and four and three quarters. Another high one. Oh, NXT's yeah. He's been on a roll lately. Oh, yeah. Well, NXT UK, like like the main event the other night, was just fan fantastic. And that's where yeah. we had the work in the Bertrand, Gibson, and Drake. So, so speaking of NXT UK... Um, yeah. Tomorrow we'll, we will be doing the NXT party, and we'd love to have you up on the big screen and have a, come have a spot of NXT with us. Help us review an episode of NXT UK. If you'd like to, uh, just find me on Twitter. I'm at nodq.com slash Stefan, that's S-T-E-F-A-N. Or if you just want to find me on Twitter, it's at Stefan R. Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. As always, the R stands for restricted. You can also find Jerry on Twitter. 
at no DQ General and also on my Facebook group Armbar, all capital A R M B A R exclamation point. point. Uh, jo join up with us. We have a whole bunch of discussions of wrestling, memes, just craziness. Crazy, craziness. crazy bunch. If you like this video, you should click the like button that's underneath me. If you like all of our videos, you should probably click the subscribe button that's underneath Jerry. And uh, <laughs> if you'd like to get these videos something like a half a day early, you should go and subscribe to our channel that's Aftermatch Wrestling. All one word Aftermatch, A-F-T-E-R-M-A-T-C-H. Wrestling. When we started tonight, we were at 50 viewers, but now we are at 51. Yes, we did the uh, predictions for WWE Fastlane with Noah uh, as soon as we got here from work, and uh, we were at 50 viewers. By the time we got done with the episode, we were at 51. So we're just climbing on our way to 100, which is our goal. If we hit 100, we will start doing the What's NXT and NXT UK videos live. All the madcap that will ensue. The goal of this is so that hopefully some of you are up at the weird hours that we record these shows and you can give us some questions that we can answer at the end of the video. And also to get 100 subscribers because that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah. In that attempt, we have started doing uh, exclusive content for Aftermatch Wrestling. We've got several episodes of the Rated R Rapport up. Um, we Last week we had two. We had uh, Cindy... One night, we also had, uh, I believe it was Noah and Chris, Chris another Mace, night. Yeah. Uh, both those episodes are up. You can find them on After Match Wrestling. And uh, if you want to get notified when we put those videos up, because there's really no weekly schedule or anything, um, we just record them after we do shows or whatnot, and then eventually I edit them and put them up before they get too damn old. <laughs> so if you want to find out when they go up, uh, there's a little bell that's also underneath Jerry that you can click and that'll give you a notification when we actually post these videos because it's at crazy hours. Yes. <coughs> It'll also let you know when we go live when we finally hit 100 subscribers. Yep. So, for the General Jerry Slaughter, I'm of course the Wizard of No DQ, Stefan Osborne, and uh, we will see you NXT time.